Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the So So Toys version of Homelander from the boys, aka John Lander. I got mine as a review sample direct from Soso -So Toys. I have not been asked to only say good things. As always, all opinions are 100% my own. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new 1-6 scale figure review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, they've kept it pretty simple. Kind of classy. We do have an image of Homelander front and centre with the crowd cheering him on down below, as well as John Lander in the middle. I think they went with John because that's his real or non-superhero name in the comics, if I remember correctly. On the side of the box, the rest of that image spilling over the edge, more crowd and a little bit of Homelander's cape. And then around the back, once again, the image continues, plus warnings and legal information. That's not it for the artwork though, So So Toys always tucks one more image underneath the outer cover. Oh, this I like. It's Homelander landing, because his cape is going up, so that means he's going down. Laser beams firing, burning embers, rubble, and a cityscape in the background. This, I reckon, should have been on the front of the box. This is a way more exciting image than the other one. Now, this guy has been a long time coming. I think we've reviewed four or five different 1-6 scale Homelanders at this point. Is this guy the best one yet? Well, that's what we're here to find out. First in hand impressions, so far so good. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is done in the typical So-So toy style being hexagonal with a relatively thick edge, giving him an added height boost. And along that edge, they've actually printed a bunch of metallic gold eagles, which I think is a callback to Homelander's collar. Up on top for the four metal grate flooring quadrants, the US flag, and it's done in metallic. You can see that on the red, so when the light hits it, it does pop. Smack bang in the middle, a metallic gold eagle. Up on top, we do have this dynamic flight pole and a spring-loaded waist clamp. I kind of wish they also threw in a crotch grabber, just so you had the benefit of having both options. We won't be going into full detail right now, at least for the head sculpts. We'll save that for when we actually pop them on the body. Just know that we get three in total. One neutral one, one smirking one, and one angry head sculpt, with an LED light-up feature that we'll be trying. They've also included these really interesting metallic mini busts. I'm not sure why they went with gold and silver. I like it though, and they complement the display base really well. Most of the time we are buying our figures because the head sculpts are so strong. So being able to display both of these rather than relegating them to the box or like a storage tub of some kind, I see as a massive plus. The sculpt work is sharp all the way around. We have his belt down below and his name at the bottom. They're also quite heavy, so I don't think you have to worry about them toppling over in the display. And even if they did, the capes are this softer, rubbery plastic material. I don't think anything's gonna break on these. They are nice and solid. For some reason, none of the other third-party Homelanders actually included this. To me, that's a head-scratcher. This is a must-have accessory for Homelander. It actually looks like the milk is sitting in there at an angle as though it's moving around. It's a very realistic looking 1-6 scale baby bottle. They've even frosted the top so it looks like the teat has been used multiple times. Which I think makes it even more nasty. He does come with a full array of hands though, ranging from these to go on his hips, flight pose hands, closed fists, a thumbs up hand and also a pointing finger gesture and just relaxed open palm hands already installed on him. The sculpt work with the wrinkling and the stitching does look pretty convincing. They've also added some airbrush shading on the back of the hands. What we are going to do now though is get Homelander himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Right off the bat, is he perfect? No. Is he awful? Also, no. Not surprisingly, this is a very solid release by Soso. -So. They've got a pretty good track record at this point. 
There are a couple of things that let this guy down, but I'll tell you what they aren't. Not the body, for one, he fills out the suit well, especially at the shoulders where he's nice and broad thanks to those metallic gold eagles that do attach with magnets, which we'll discuss later. The outfit on top of the body, which I think is the most accurate we've seen from these third-party Homelanders. The accessories with the milk bottle and the head sculpt stands. And the wired cape. I like all of that stuff. I'm pretty sure we all know what the elephant in the room is, though. It's the head sculpt, so let's talk about it. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Homelander's first head sculpt. The first of three, to be specific. I've seen a lot of people online bagging this head sculpt and saying that it's terrible. I don't think it's all that terrible. The Star Race one? That one is terrible. This is a darn sight better than that one was. It's not perfect, but I can still see the likeness, especially from that angle right there. The three-quarter turn, I think, is its strongest angle. Front on, yeah, you do start to lose the likeness for some reason. Technically speaking, though, it's well sculpted and it's well painted. There's this skin texture on the surface. There's also that speckling of paint to mimic complexion, a five o'clock shadow down below, a subtle smirk, and he's even got some frown lines up top. The hair does have a natural flow to it, and you can make out the individual strands. Like I said, though, he does have three head sculpts in total. So, if you decide that the first head sculpt isn't your vibe and you want something a little bit more expressive, the smiling head sculpt might just do it for you. He's got these very exaggerated dimples which puff up his cheeks and really sell that massive smirk. He also has this dangling piece of hair down the front. Now, it is plugged in separately and there is a bit of a gap there, but from a distance, it's not super obvious. It just blends in with the rest of the sculpt work for his hairline. The third head sculpt, by far the most expressive, and the angriest. He's got the gritted teeth, and he's got the LED light-up eyes. It's the same exact mechanism as the Hot Toys Superman light-up eye effect, so you just pop the head sculpt off, turn it on, slide it back down, and then the eyes are lit up. And he even has the vein work around the edges. It's worth noting that the skin tone match between the sculpts, all three of them, and the neck piece is Perfect. No complaints from me whatsoever. The blend is very natural. Yeah, so this turned out way better than I was expecting. This is the Toys Era head sculpt, and I thought it would be too small because the Toys Era body is a lot smaller than this one is. But it isn't. It fits in proportion, and it works really well here. Even the skin tone match between the neck and the sculpt is super close. Not everyone is going to pick up multiple Homelanders, though, I understand. You're not going to get Toys Era and kitbash it with So-So. You're just going to pick up one figure and call it a day. If you were going to combine multiple, though, this is totally an option. Now, around the back, the cape is quite good, actually. It is two-ply, so it's a nice, thick, sturdy material, and I love the colours. The red is nice and vibrant, the white is stark, it's not too see-through. It's punchy, and it looks exactly as I was hoping it would. The stars up top are very well defined on this dark blue background. And it's wired along the edges, plus along the bottom. It pretty much does whatever you want it to. Underneath, you do have a zipper down the back, so if you were wanting to switch out the body for some reason, it should be relatively easy to get in there and do that. Not that I think you need to. This body is big enough for me. He's got the biceps, he's got the defined pecs, and the abs poking through the suit. There's also not a ton of padding here, so you'll see what I mean when we get to articulation. This doesn't get in the way of posing. Over the top of that, he's got this matte blue suit with the glossy eagle screen printed over the top, so there's a juxtaposition of textures and finishes. When the light bounces off the surface, you can see all of that definition. Now, unfortunately, this red panel cannot open like it does in the show. I was hoping that it was going to be able to, but... Keeping this as flat as it is, nice and seamless, is also a good option. Now, the collar is accurate to the show, finally. After all this time, with all of the different Homelanders, they've got the collar bang on. He also has some glossy screen-printed lines and the panels going over his elbows. Now, the gloves are a split-cut design, so you do articulate the hand independently of the gauntlets. The gold, nice and shiny and metallic. And whoever it was at so, so that decided to finally make the hands really easy to swap without having to use a hairdryer, thank you, because that was the one thing I dreaded with my so-so reviews. Now they just pop on and off nice and easily. The eagles, though, are interesting for the shoulders because 
they're on magnets. Rather than having them permanently attached to the suit, you can remove them, which I think is the right call. Because if you're going crazy with the posing, you might tear these off the suit if they were glued on. Now that they're on magnets, you can dial in the pose, pop them back on, and they'll sit in place, rather than doing any damage to the suit underneath. The belt is made of the same material and painted the same way as those eagles. It's a little bit more of a warm tone to the gold, rather than the more champagne colour for the gauntlets. I'm okay with a bit of a difference. The eagle belt buckle is nice and sharp, and there's some airbrush shading over the top. It is free floating too, so if you want to move it up and down depending on the pose, doable. You can see some musculature poking through the suit as the light bounces off those eagles still screen printed on the surface. Then we've got some more eagles on the front of his boots. You also have this zipper sculpted in, some wrinkling, and all of this leather grain texture. I like the way the boots look and they're accurate, they're just not super functional unfortunately because they are not a split cut boot design. That means in a flight pose or if you want to get more dynamic with an A stance, you cannot tilt the ankles down or side to side, they are locked in position. At least they look good. On the underside, some sculpted tread that's also been fully painted. I just thought I'd quickly try it. Toys era boots, can they work on the So So Toys body? Technically, yes and no. They're a little bit loose. You do have to borrow the ankle connector from that Toys era body, pop it in the ankle joints on the So So Toys one, and then the boots will pop on. They look a little bit too large for me, and I don't think they're painted or sculpted as well as the So So ones. Either way, now you have a split cut boot design so you can get more dynamic with your posing. For a quick side by side comparison, on the left, So So Toys Homelander, and on the right, the Toys Era version. This is I think their third or fourth attempt at this point, I've lost count honestly. I like things about both of these guys. The Toys Era one, it's gotta be the head sculpts, he comes with five in total, you just can't beat five head sculpts, that's an insane amount. Whereas with Soso, it's everything else. The LED light up effect in one of the head sculpts, the little head stands, the accessories with the milk bottle, the display base, the wired cape, the outfit, the body with the broader shoulders, the beefier chest and him being taller, which helps with proportions, and the detail on all of the sculpted pieces. I give all of that stuff to Soso. So in a perfect world, I would combine the two. Right now, if I had to pick between them, it's a tough one, but I would say that the Soso one is the superior quality feeling figure. In hand, he just feels bigger, chonkier, and sturdier to me. I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying the Toy Zero one is bad, because that would be a lie. He is more than serviceable as a 1-6 scale Homelander. It's just that when you add up all of the other stuff about Soso, that's what won me over. Now, compared next to the Soso Toys Butcher, perfect pairing. Butcher is ever so slightly shorter, and that works for me. I don't mind Homelander being the taller of the two. So So is working on their own version of Soldier Boy, and I can't wait to get that one, because I'm hoping it fixes some of the issues I have with this Toys Era version. The feet are slightly too big, the hands are too large, and the head sculpt can't look down, which is very frustrating. He's always looking up. Still, this works for now. Soldier Boy is ever so slightly shorter than Homelander, but there's not much in it, he's just a hair shorter. Going over articulation, starting off with Homelander's head sculpt. It is on a fixed neck with a double ball peg. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, just enough for a flight pose. Swivel and pivot side to side. For the arms, the eagles may pop off on you because they are just sitting there on magnets. Going up to there, Going forward and back, that's held on surprisingly well actually. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, single bend at the elbow going to 90. And then the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. The torso does crunch forward and back. You are fighting a little bit of padding, but it does go further forward than I was expecting. The legs will go forward to there. They will go out to there. Swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90, and then the ankles, they're not a split cut boot design, these are solid plastic, so you only really get swivel. Wrapping up on the third party 1-6 scale Homelander by Soso -So Toys. When this guy was announced, I was really excited. So So Toys making a Homelander, me being a self proclaimed So So Toys fanboy because they do make really good stuff, I was over the moon. And then when he came out, questions were asked. 
people were thinking, oh no, did he turn out terrible or did he turn out fantastic? While he's not perfect, he's a lot closer to being great than he is terrible. Just my opinion, you don't have to agree with me, of course. You can see the figure and make up your own mind. Let me tell you why I think he's so good. The body proportions for one, the articulation, the outfit being as accurate as it is, the hands, the array of gestures, yes, that is a thing, it is important to a 1-6 scale figure, the accessories with the headstands and the milk bottle, and the LED light-up head sculpt. The only things that let this guy down for me, the boots not being a split cut, and the likeness. The head sculpt is the soul of a figure, so when the head sculpt is off ever so slightly, I get it, people get pissed, and I wasn't all that happy initially either. I know it's a bit of a cop-out to say this, they are better in person, and you get three of them, so chances are you'll be able to figure out a pose and head sculpt combo that works for you. So I'm thinking that when you get this guy in hand, you are going to be happy. If not, there are plenty of other Homelanders out there for you to add to your display. For me, this is my favourite one. I am finally done with Homelanders. This, for me, is peak Homelander. He's going in the bloody collection. I'm calling it a day for Homelander. For now. This guy was provided to me as a review sample by Soso Toys. As always, all opinions are 100% my own. I have not been asked to only say good things, nor would I. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.